Now, first of all, for the first two categories, most loved, most frequently used apps or software programs, I'll just go around row by row and I will ask you to name two, the top two in each category, okay? Just say the names of the apps or the software program. Of course, we might not be familiar with all of them. That's fine. We just want to have a sense of where the consensus is, where people at this point, people your age are converging in terms of your digital lifestyle. So we'll start from here. Of course, try to speak loud because we have masks. The classroom is large for the people who are sitting in the back. And you're not just trying to communicate with me. You're trying to communicate with someone at the opposite angle, the opposite corner of the classroom, okay? Go ahead. So we start with most loved. Okay. Most loved. Uh, most loved, my top two is I got Shazam, and then Waze. Sure, yeah. And then, uh, okay. Just that, just the names, just two names of apps or software program that you love the most. Okay. Um, I usually use uh, Webtoon apps and Microsoft Office. Mm -hmm. You love them? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, uh, you use Spotify and YouTube. Yeah. Uh, Discord and Spotify. <coughs> uh, I said Twitter and mm -hmm. those apps. Uh, my top three would be Discord and Steam. Google Calendar and Gmail. Okay, most loved? Yeah. <laughs> Saying it, I'm not judging, I'm not judging. I like Uber Eats and Instagram. Okay. I use uh, Good Mood Spies and Discord. Okay. Spotify and Snapchat. Sure. Uh, Instagram and Amethyst. Uh, TikTok and Apple Music. I would say YouTube and Snapchat. Instagram and Strava. Okay. Snapchat and TikTok. Instagram and TikTok. Instagram, Google Maps. Mm -hmm. uh, music, B, and YouTube. Discord okay. and TikTok. So Spotify and Twitter. Yeah. Uh, Twitter and Spotify. Okay. Spotify and Instagram. Spotify and TikTok. Instagram and TikTok. Yeah. iMessage and TikTok. Sure. iMessage and Apple. Yeah. TikTok and Snapchat. Mm-hmm. Square and Netflix. TikTok and Spotify. E-Trade and Trade Okay. 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 Okay, thank you. TikTok and WeChat. Okay, so I would say from just an approximate evaluation that Spotify is the winner, <laughs> and in general, as one would expect, your responses pointed mostly at entertainment apps of some kind, music or videos or films, or tools that one uses to communicate directly or indirectly, whether it be Instagram or uh, Snapchat or some other uh, kind of app. Uh, can I confess something? Of course, I'm a boomer. That's the premise. <laughs> Even though uh, my high school offered a programming course that I took when I was 15 or, or, or 16, and we had Personal computers did not exist at that point. Those were the 1970s. So we had a computer donated by a bank that was as big as that table and didn't have a screen. It communicated through the printer. Uh -huh. And instead of memory, we had magnetic cards that were about the size of a credit card with a magnetic back that could store a few bytes. Okay, so being a boomer as I am, what is Discord? <laughs> the, the category, what is it used for? It's pretty much like a, a chat room that you use for like more mainly like gaming is one aspect of it or just like collective groups. So gamers people. get together on Discord to talk about the games or? Uh, that's one part as well as people who share the same interests. It's like groups with like. So you can talk about anything? Anything, but oh. the majority is like 
really, it's mainly towards for gaming and my chat groups. Okay, thank, thank you for, for clarifying. Okay, um, now, with, with, with a few exceptions, the exceptions are interesting because if one says Gmail or some other office, some other productive tool in the category of most loved, this to me shows the extent to which our lives have been modified and our lifestyles have been modified by the uh, use, by the availability of these digital tools that are so intrinsic that are not just productivity tools or not perceived or seen as productivity tools, but uh, can be placed in that category of most loved software because I couldn't do without it. That, that is what tells me that kind of answer. Now, the second category, uh, two names for most frequently used, which again, could be the same or could be different. It's up to you, because as I said, you, you may love Waze, for example, but you're not always in your car. You may love Uber, but you're not always at a corner hailing uh, a ride, and therefore there might be some substitutions. However, if it is a perfect match for you between most frequently used in terms of hours and uh, most loved, you can repeat what you said the first time. Can we do it quickly again? Instagram and YouTube. Instagram and YouTube. Spotify and Gmail and Instagram. Twitter and Instagram. Okay. WhatsApp and YouTube. Discord and Genshin. YouTube, YouTube and Instagram. Instagram and Procreate. YouTube and Spotify. Oh, Instagram and YouTube. Um, couldn't hear. Instagram and YouTube. Thank you. Google Calendar and Slack. What is the second one? Slack. Oh, yes, of course. Mm -hmm. YouTube and Gmail. Spotify and What was the second one after Fosify? Instagram. Okay. Spotify and TikTok. Okay. Instagram okay. TikTok. Okay. So, of course, we have more of a mix in the results. This time we had a lot more Gmail answers. We still had a lot of Instagram, TikTok. Uh, and, and such, uh, but uh, we also had some more productivity apps that were mentioned, okay? Now, for the last section, I will not go around because the answers should be justified this time. I'm not just looking for what you use, but how you use it or why you use it. So I'll hear from some of you and then I'll read what you wrote in your notes when I get to my uh, Gmail account, okay? And we don't have to go in any particular order. In fact, I will ask you to volunteer information about any category where you think your input would be more significant, more interesting, or unique, different from what others might do. So tell me what you use in one of these categories and either how or why or, or briefly about both. So think about it, raise, raise your hand, and again, try to speak loud enough that anyone can hear you in the classroom in, in spite of you wearing a mask. Okay. Who would like to contribute something? Please. Um, so for info on habits to buy, I like using YouTube and like watching those. Videos. Can you speak a bit louder? Yeah. I, I couldn't catch it. So for info on items to buy, I like to watch YouTube videos and see what kind of people that have like bought this product and see how they like 
Yeah. Okay. And you keep track of them in some way or? Um, yeah, normally I'll like only go back to the same person. Like they are like that. So you're subscribed to certain channels. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, for the same one, like collecting your machine um, yeah. info and items. Would like Amazon be one of those? Like just going through reviews and seeing how people post pictures and things like that? Sure. Yeah. It's still a digital kind of approach that you can describe. Um, I use Brave as my web browser for exclusively personal use and Google Chrome exclusively for class use. Okay. So I can have my personal Google account logged in on one browser and my school Google account logged in on the other. Are you a multiple tabber? Yes. Give me a number of your worst tabbing uh, count situation. I try to keep it under 10. Oh, yeah, no, then you're not a tabber. Come on. No, that's something I, I would say though. 300, 400. <laughs> that would be. <laughs> that's that's, I that's what I used to do in the past. <laughs> so just keep a tab as a reminder of something that I would need to read, to file, to work on. And then I would realize that I had 300, 400 tabs in Firefox or. Uh, for the tracking classes and appointments, I kind of just rely on Blackboard and Google Calendar and like I import everything in the beginning of the semester and just rely on that. Sure, yeah, no, I, I think it's essential. If you're not using any kind of digital agenda, you should really be mindful of, of the following, that we live in a society where there is limited tolerance for any kind of mistake. So you need an agenda not to be reminded of what you have in your day, but so that you don't miss any single appointment or meeting or deadline because these days the expectation is such that even missing one uh, is, is seen as a, a big mistake or, or a personal shortcoming if you are a student with a professor, an employee with your boss, uh, etc. So an agenda is not because your mind is frail it is not able to keep up with uh, your your agenda, your schedule, but it's a backup mechanism so that you never, not once during the semester, miss an exam, right? Or uh, miss an assignment before Blackboard closes the Dropbox area or whatever they use. Please. Um, I like to use Word and Mobility to collect, um, collect notes and write assignments. Mm -hmm. For every class or only some of the classes? Um, you should go to use these two optimals because um, for Word, you have saved it as a PDF and then you just email it. And for Nobility, I just keep all my notes in one place so I can organize sure. it. Okay. Hilary? Uh, I use Notion to track classes, appointments, and deadlines for school mostly, and Notion and Goodness to write and archive class notes. Okay. Now, <coughs> We're almost getting to the end of this discussion. So if I could myself try to identify different kinds of users, anyone who has some kind of journal for reflections and more importantly, ideas, just ideas that pop in your mind, but exactly because those are ideas that pop out of the void, apparently you want to put them down before you forget, and in case you want to review them and expand them. Any kind of digital journal journaling, either for personal reflection or for intellectual exploration. Yes? Twitter. Okay. <laughs> sure. I usually just use the notes app on my phone. Okay. Uh, if, I, if I'm don't have my computer, then I just send myself a message in Telegram. Okay. Anyone else would like to contribute for this entry? Now, anyone who uses two different tools to collect notes for a paper or store articles and sources that you could use to write a paper different from the software where you will write the actual paper, whether it be Word, Pages, the uh, Google Docs editor, that's, and, and such. Anyone who has anything? Yeah. I usually um, take every piece of information and I put it in Notability and kind of write like an abstract, and then I usually write my paper on like Google Docs or Word. OK. 
Okay. Do you include screenshots um, from sources? Well, usually I have it like all compiled in one area, and then I'll like like have my iPad next to me, and then I'll just type it out. Okay. Yeah. Um, I would like download like say like an article to like Google Drive, and then like have it like sitting right next to like my Microsoft Word. Yeah. So like, you have a right folder right. where you collect. Yeah. That or, is a yeah, digital like process said, as well. Yeah, or like she said, I would download it to my iPad on Mobility so I can like highlight really easily yeah. and like keep it like right next to my laptop so it's like all right here. Okay. Now, the last question in reference to your creative process, whether it be for personal growth or in order to complete an assignment such as a paper or, or a similar academic project, do you feel that the end result is different based on the software or the device that you use. The most glaring example would be, do you feel that when you're writing in pen, what you write or the style of what you write is different than when you type? Or if you use speech recognition and dictation, nowadays all the devices we have have wonderful uh, tools for uh, dictation uh, because they're not just based on the sounds and therefore for example they work beautifully even for people with an accent such as myself because they're a combination of the analysis of the sounds and a semantic engine and therefore you can dictate and everything comes out 99% perfect or 100% perfect including names have you experienced that the end results are different based on the tool. Going from writing with a pen versus writing with a pencil, writing along the lines or just drawing as a mind map, to on the other end of the spectrum, doing everything in Word, Google Docs, etc. Have you experienced anything of that? If so, I would like to hear from you otherwise. I find that writing notes on paper, I memorize things better. Yeah, that is supported by a lot of research, absolutely. Uh, depending on like what utensil I use for writing, it takes like how my writing comes out. So if I use normal ballpoint pens, it's a little sloppier compared to thinner, mm -hmm. more intricate pens. Yeah, absolutely. Anyone else would like to add? Yes, and um, then see you. I like to use like good notes, but with my pencil, mm -hmm. as opposed to typing it out. It feels that it resonates with your mental processes yeah. in a different way. It's a lot better to write it, but I also don't always yeah. have pen and paper with me. Sure. I used to print out all my slides like last semester for one of my class, and it's a lot of like things. But right now I'm trying to switch to digital. It's it's a little bit like harder to like comprehend, but I'm trying to get used to it. Okay. Sure. Yes. When I when I write on my note, I think I can draw on the paper, so I think I can be more creative. Mm -hmm. You feel it's, it's liberating that, that you can go in different directions as opposed to the line where you type yeah, when you go to the yeah, next like line, etc. Yeah. Yes, very interesting. And for now, that's that's it. And again, if you haven't sent me those notes, send them to me via email and then you'll develop them for the assignment, but we'll talk about the assignment. They're not, that's not it for today. I still have 10 minutes, but it's it for this activity. Yes? What, what time do you want our notes in the box? Oh, uh, if you wrote them in, in pen, you can leave me the page. Okay. Of course, I would say take a picture of it if you have a, a smartphone. And otherwise, uh, whenever you have time. Okay. By the end of the day, it, it's fine. Uh, the reason why we engaged in this discussion is that I wanted to direct your attention on relevant digital processes that will then relate to what will be said next week and the week after that about the notion of a second brain kind of app. Okay? So that's how we will develop that direction that the additional reflection and analysis of what emerged today will take. For now I have 
uh, less than 10 minutes to introduce Notion. So between now and Friday, you should go to the class website, click on that link, and get your educational plan. They also offer a free plan. Don't do that, because it will be best for the projects and the assignments to have the free educational plan, and also because you can keep that forever, as long as uh, that license uh, is allowed by the company that produces Notion, okay? But that, that is the uh, equivalent of their professional plan, which runs something like $8 per month, completely free. The only thing is that, keep in mind, that you need to register your account under your Storybrook EDU Gmail I don't know right now, the last time it wasn't so, uh, but I don't know right now whether once you start the process, you will be uh, subjected to some kind of verification. You might have to open your Gmail inbox and confirm uh, that that is your account, okay? And that's why I suggest that you do it before Friday. But then, of course, I'll repeat these things on Friday, and if anyone on Friday has not done the plan yet, I will ask them to subscribe then and there for that reason. Now, I have a series of screenshots that I prepared the last time I offered this class in 2020, and I will use them to illustrate how the program works. I will also work on it from the screen, but it's quicker if I don't have to type everything and I have plenty of screenshots to cover the processes. So I'll show you some of these screenshots now and then more on Friday and next week. Keep in mind that we will work on each app for three or four weeks. So there will be time to deepen our understanding of the app and then keep in mind also that some of the things that you will see demonstrated are not applicable to anyone who will just do the initial assignment of the app, but can be useful for anyone who will develop the final project with Notion as opposed to another app. So you can click in here and you can see CCS 395, this is a wiki produced with the third app we will use, which is called DocuWiki with a K because it was produced in Germany. So in here, reflective of the template and the design of their website circa 2020, you can see that from their homepage, you can sign up, but also download various tools. They have a desktop app for iOS, Android, Mac, Windows, and they have a web clipper, which is common to a lot of these apps, because the idea is that you spend a lot of time on the web reading, exploring, and sometimes you find something that you think is useful now or might be useful in the future and you want to capture an image, part of a page, a text, a full article and the web clipper for Notion or Evernote allows you to send something directly to Notion to a new page with some basic information depending on the app you can also add some tags but it's almost one click or two clicks away and you don't have to do anything. It is stored 
on your collection of notes automatically for future reference or something that will come up whenever you perform a search. But that, of course, uh, for the educational tool, whatever you have to do is click on that link and then go through the sign up process. This is an example of the plans they have and pretty much the prices is probably the same. They have a free personal plan, which is pretty powerful, much more powerful than the free plan given by Evernote, but even just a small thing. With the free plan, there is no way you can retrieve something you accidentally deleted or changed accidentally. With the free professional plan that you can have with the EDU mail, you have a month long of previous versions of a page or content that can be restored if you accidentally deleted it. Okay, so you don't want to go to the professor and say, I, I had done my, um, my, my page in Notion, but my dog pressed the keyboard and deleted it by accident and now I don't have it. Okay, that would be the, the version of, the current version of the dog in my homework, excuse me. Then you have the personal pro, which I think is more expensive now. Uh, I, I think it is eight dollars. Um, you have a team version with multiple members collaborating, and then you have an enterprise version, which they're selling a lot because they're trying to cater to big organization with hundreds or thousands of employees working all together on big projects with Notion, and therefore the pricing depends on the size, the scale of the organization, right? And frankly, what I'm trying to get to is the fact that other than satisfying the SBC, uh, uh, the two categories associated with uh, this class, the idea is that you come out of this semester with some knowledge, some familiarity with software that you can include in your resume, which makes you a little bit different from anyone who just lists Excel, Microsoft Word, Gmail, or, or Outlook, okay? Because some interesting companies do rely on these kinds of software. So to have in front of them during an interview, someone who says, yes, I know how to use Notion. I know how to use, how to use some of the advanced features in Notion can make an impression, right? And you can see from here that between the free personal and the personal pro, the reason a lot of difference Right? You're limited in terms of the size of the file that you upload. So if you want to upload big PDFs because you can embed a PDF in a, no in a note, you cannot do that. To me, the most important thing is the version history, the fact that you can go back because these things happen. You, are, you, you press a key accidentally. You, you meant to delete a page and you delete another one. Or what you can do in Notion is have pages and sub pages. You may not realize that by deleting a page, all the sub pages are also deleted. You may not realize that those sub pages are not separate, but they are connected to one page that at some point you thought might not be necessary anymore. 